Okay, this is part two, video number two. Uh, you lost your ID. You can pick it up in D number twenty-eight. <laughs> but anyway, so we're gonna just go straight back. We're gonna pick up where we left off. Deuteronomy twenty-eight, forty-seven, and forty-eight. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, not friends, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm going to try not to be all day on this one, but this one right here, I'm telling you, this points us out. I'm telling you, it tells us, uh, it says, you're going to serve, uh, because you didn't serve the Lord with joyfulness. I mean, we were stiff neck. We didn't, I mean, you tell people now that they have to obey God's laws. Oh, no, they, 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 they ain't going to do that. <laughs> and with gladness of heart. For the abundance of all things. See, that's where our abundance of all things. That's where you're. I'm telling you now. You ain't blessed and highly favored. You ain't got the favor of God. You are not uh, prosperous because you have not served the Lord thy God with gladness of heart and, and with joyfulness. Serving them how? By obeying God's laws. It's in the previous verses, it's throughout the whole Bible, all the way to the end in, in Revelation. Says that you that, that is that is how you make the kingdom. You got to keep God's command. Okay. Forty-eight. Therefore, shalt thou, I mean, serve your enemies. Let's make sure we understand enemies. I should have put enemies in white too, but I didn't because some of y'all think these folks around here your friends. They are not our friends. If the Most High would have said, "Well, they gonna be your enemy here first, then they'll be your, then they'll be your friend." No, the the Bible teaches us to trust not. Your enemy. Don't trust them. Because as sure as I am rusted, I'm like, I'm not trying not to get off that. Uh, Therefore, thou shalt, you will serve your enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So he sent these enemies against him. Mm, that's, a, that's a hard thought when you think about it. Y'all better, better come to know this Old Testament God, because if y'all think he changed, y'all mistaken. We all should be dead right now. Anyway, we can send them against us in, in, in hunger, in thirst, and nakedness. So we are the only people on the planet that cannot, that are not self-sufficient. So those of you who live in these fine homes and, and drive these fine houses and I mean, drive high, and live in these fine homes, that's ever that drive fine vehicles and stuff like that, and think you got, you know, that you're living your best life and you got it going on and that you're just prosperous and nothing. Nothing can happen to you because you think you made it happen with the Lord's help, of course. You think that. You think that, you, that this doesn't apply to you. Mm. Boy, are you mistaken. But we think about it. If you were that free, only a free people can, can feed themselves. That's how you know we're still slaves because we have to go to our presser for hunger for, and to eat, we have to go to our presser for water. We can't even catch water out the sky. That's, you can get a fine for that. Can you believe it? Free water that God gives us. We can't even catch it out of the sky. We, find, we, they, we, 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 can, we can get fined for that. And in nakedness. We ain't got no textile plants. We can't create our own clothes. Everything that we say is probably from China or from, you know, wherever. Made in, it might be made in the USA. But it's, but it's not made by... Uh, it's not fashioned by Nicole Johnson. Oh, I told my name. Didn't I? I mean, it's it. It's not. It's not something that we do. We can, are able to do for ourselves. And I don't care how much money you got. You are not self-sufficient that way. Not generally speaking, we're not that way for ourselves as a people. Now, other people groups, other nations can do that. They clothe themselves. They feed themselves. 
they give they 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 are, they make the water available for their people. But we can't do that. We have to go the men says and what of all things. So that means that for a driver's license, for death certificates, for education, for uh, for employment, for you name it, you name it, we got to go to our enemy for everything, literally everything. So we know that this curse applies to us. This, this and it says, and put a yoke upon our neck. Then we have, you know. You, there is no other race of people that have had yokes upon their necks like we have. I'm sorry, y'all. You can search high and low. You can look everywhere. And when it comes to as a way to enslave a people, because yes, there were other people that were enslaved, but not the way we were, where you're broken up from your families and, and you don't you never return and see your homeland and that kind of stuff. No. And what's, what's really interesting about this particular part is that it says until you've been destroyed because there was going to come a time when slavery would become illegal or against the law or we would be freed and that you know as far as the law not allowing slavery to continue but we by that time we would be so destroyed we would have had taken on this this um this white jesus and this false religion uh and all these kind of things uh, and been so indoctrinated and assimilated and, and, and brainwashed and, and conditioned um, that you could take the, the yokes off our neck. And we it's kind of like the, a dog. When you have a dog that wants to run off and it has a chain, and you know, let's say a dog in the backyard, and he's trying to run away or run off, and the chain jerks him back. And after a while, after he gets jerked back enough times, he'll know not to go to that spot because that's, that's where he gets his neck jerked back. And that is how we are. That is what that's, that, that part of the verse, until he have destroyed the, until we're destroyed. So that we know that, oh, we don't, we don't need to ask for that. We, we just got to go along and get along. And we, we, that's where these gatekeepers come in. Because they just want some comfort. They want to be able to, to have some creature comforts and, and to, to be in the same spaces as our oppressors, as our master, so to speak. And of course, many of those were uh, offsprings of, of master, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's what it means. It means until you're destroyed, don't ask for too much. Don't 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 aspire for too much. Just 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 kind of know your place and have your little you know little drink on the weekend or be able to you know enjoy church on Sunday and you know just be able to you know yeah. That's that's all that's all you can aspire for. Your great reward is going to be in heaven. That's when you are you are destroyed when you don't when you don't realize that you're not free. That man, you got you got a nation, you got a people in. You got them right where you want them when they are walking around. I know I can drive anywhere I want to go. I can go. I can travel here and there. I can build me a big old fine home and I can give me a PhD. And you think all that stuff makes you free? And at the snap of a finger, all of that can be taken away from you. Legally or illegally, because they got they the ones who make the laws. That's another thing that we want. And one of all things, we can't even govern ourselves. We can't even control our own uh, our own selves with our own laws, like other people groups can. Do you hear me? Do you hear what I'm saying? This particular curse screams us. It says in hunger. And to make it, if they turn the grid off, all of us are poor people. All of us just instant. Instantly we all become poor because we have to count on them to turn the lights on. When we have these power outages and stuff like that, I, I, I don't even believe that they'd be, I don't even believe they'd be real. I think that, even if they are real, I think they try to take, this is kind of, you know, they, they, they did the great, they started the re, great reset in 2021. Y'all don't know that you can Google that. But this is their way of trying to figure out okay, how, how what are they uh, what are they willing to do without how 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 are they going to react if we take this away or if we clear all the shelves and you know like right here says food shortage announcement Biden actually made a food shortage announcement several months ago now most of us don't even know it probably was on the Friday I can't remember what day it was but we have you can Google it but they are trying to give you an idea of what's coming because the Most High said. He, he had it put in the Bible. Christ said all those different signs that were going to precede his return. And they, like I say, 
if they cut your, your if they cut this off or they say that you didn't pay your mortgage, you know they we fix the change from uh you know <laughs> you're not gonna maybe use dollar bills anymore. Oh, that's gonna go away. <laughs> there's just no way that there's just no way that, that this is gonna happen. Or it's not going to happen in my lifetime. See how selfish we are? They get us so selfish and individual like that they, we don't even care about our uh, our future seed, our lineage, our, our legacy. We don't even care about, we, we're not willing to do things now to save uh, and, and to uh, prepare or to empower our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. This slide is just uh, just reiterating what I said earlier. That's what it says, and in one of all things. So here you have the instance where you need a job, birth certificate, death certificate, uh, or entertainment, to carry a gun, uh, you know, for, for, for charity, you know, to, you know, all kinds of subsidies, or, you know, government subsidies, to, to, for housing, health care, education, home ownership, all. You see the red lining um, map at the bottom there. Even if you want this appeal or aspirin, you got to go to your oppressor for that. In one of all things, and then that last part, and he shall put uh, put a yoke upon your neck. This right here is an example of that is not a actor, y'all. That is an actual slave. You see, he has actually his Israelite garb on, in fact, but it is an actual slave. It's a, a photograph. And the one in the corner at the bottom, too, not to put the cafe up there. But this is uh, characteristics of our slavery. This is an identifier. And all these other pictures of these black people that think that they are, these are what I call the destroyed. They, they, they think they're free because they are assimilating. They, you know, OJ is probably the poster child. He actually, think, he actually thought that he could just... Uh, completely remove his identity as a black person altogether. And uh, you see what happened to him. Candace Owen, yeah, she says some good things sometimes, but she is definitely, um, you know, she thinks that she's free. Uh, and Stephen A. Smith, I mean, I don't want to name everybody because some of these folks I know y'all like and love and all that kind of stuff. But these are people who are assimilated, who are, who are gatekeepers. I'm not even getting to the people that are the Masons and all that kind of stuff, people that... Uh, who have no clue that they're being used uh, to help bring on the new world order. But these people right here, they're sold out. They're sellouts. They're complete sellouts. Every single one of them. That's why you see the little coon up there in the top. That was a great movie. You have to check that movie out. But anyway, that's all I got to say about that. This is another example of until he hath destroyed thee. Deuteronomy 28:49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end from from the end of the earth as far as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Mm. Obviously, we did not understand English when we got over here to America, so that's a match. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, it says uh, he's going to bring a nation. That means he's going to deliberately bring a nation against us from afar. So we know that there's a long distance, especially by way of ships, <laughs> from the new land uh, called America today, uh, to, from Africa or even from Israel, which of course is Africa. And uh, he said that as swift as the eagle flies, which is a reference to America. See, America uh, is, was, is, would not be known as America because, again, this is a land that no man really dwelt upon except for the Gadites. They dis they they discovered America and the Americas uh, when they went uh, uh, after the Assyrian captivity. But this is uh, a reference to, this is prophecy. So this is something that's going to come in the future. And this is a nation that is going to be, uh, uh, come, that's going to come about in the future. Okay. And, um, so this, of course, is a, a perfect reason to believe the scriptures are about us, and particularly this curse and uh, the nation that the Lord is going to send against us. Deuteronomy 28.50, a fierce-looking nation without respect for the old or pity for the young. 
you know that this that's definitely this country. I mean, this country has no regard as far as we're concerned, whether we're young and old, uh, young or old. I remember my father telling and sharing. We even have it on video of him talking about how, you know, as a young man, uh, you know, he's been a father since he was 20. <laughs> he has 11 kids. But how he would be called boy. Grown man with kids, with family, you know, called a boy. It served in uh, World War II. Called a boy. Uh, no regard. Uh, and how he would, uh, he would have to make sure his eyes were down when he passed by white people on the, on the street. Uh, he shared that with us. Um, <laughs> and look at a perfect example of no pity for the young Emmett Till. Emmett Till, of course, was mutilated. A 14-year-old boy coming down to uh, visit some family in the South. Uh, and whatever he did, it did not, it, you know, it, it did not warrant any kind of what they did to them. Did, you know, they, they beat him to death. And uh, I don't know if it was before or after he died, but they even shot him. Uh, and then they throw, threw his body into a river. Um, no regard, no pity for the young. This young man had, you know, he was, all, he was a child, 14 years old. Uh, the, the Birmingham church bombing, those four little girls, those four little girls that had come to church that Sunday, I think it was youth Sunday even, and they were down in the basement doing their last minute prep, you know, primping and, you know, getting their things just right, you know, making sure they look, you know, just pretty and, and getting ready to serve, uh, sing in the choir and do whatever they did on youth Sundays. Uh, and, um, and one of the little girls, I believe, Carol, Robertson, she was, um, she had, uh, she had her first little heels. I remember when I got my first little heels, when she had her first little heels that Sunday, according to her mom's testimony. And um, they were bombed and their lives just snuffed out out of their, they were, you know, lives just cut short. No regard for the young. Um, of course, we, you know how we were water hoes back in, during the civil, civil rights era. They, uh, they didn't care if you were a woman. They didn't care if you were a child. I know most of the time that there weren't children amongst the marching and stuff. But there were older gentlemen. There were there were mature men and women, uh, as well as young people. Uh, but they would hold. And you know that the 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 power behind those water hoses. Uh, I mean that water coming out could just rip your skin off. It was very 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 uh, painful. They didn't care. Uh, of course, you know, people that were beaten in the march, you see that they're being uh, beaten by police sticks. Uh, and uh, the Tuskegee uh, experiment, where they, they pretending that they are trying to treat syphilis or whatever, but they were actually giving the men syphilis. And these men suffered. I mean, they suffered. Uh, you know, it was just chronic illness up until, to up until they died. Those that are, I don't, I'm not sure if, if any are still alive today, but we've been experimenting on since we've been pretty much been here. They don't think we have any pain. They don't think we have any kind of, uh, you know, soul or anything like that. So th this is definitely, uh, this curse definitely speaks directly about us. It is, it identifies us because this is a nation that has no regard for old or young. And um, that is not, that is the most high zeroing down on where we would be when these things would be manifested, when these things would be, uh, when the curses would, you know, come about. And this is, this, this fits us to a T. It's a very, very sad reality, but it goes to show you the heart of a person when they cannot regard elderly. They cannot regard children. That speaks a lot to their humanity, their inability to feel and to empathize with other people that aren't like them. So just another curse that identifies us. Deuteronomy 28, 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high, until thy high and fenced walls come down wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land. 
which the Lord thy God hath given thee. So everything that anytime we even own property or own a piece of land or whatever, we would get duped out of it, or we would it would be not a safe space for us. It wouldn't be a place where we could could rest our heads or exhale, so to speak. Uh, you know, you see here the clansmen who bombed Shuttlesworth uh, home during the civil rights uh, era. Um, Malcolm X, who, you know, he, there's a famous photo of him. He's trying to defend his gate. He's, try, he's standing at the gate to try and protect what's his, to try to protect his property, his wife, his children. Uh, and then, you know, the, the massacres, you know, the, 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 all the various massacres that took place. When, you know, when we tried to have our own little communities, and we had our men that were present and accounted for and standing at the gate. There was no safety for us. There was nothing. We would, they would besiege us. They would, they would destroy. They would drop bombs like in Tulsa on a whole community. They would, you know, they would, they would just, they wouldn't just let us be. We couldn't just be in this country. We never could just be. I mean, if they don't get jealous of us and, and want what we have, then they are, you know, they, they, they absolutely refuse for us to have any kind of uh, authority, any kind of power over ourselves, uh, any kind of autonomy. There's just no way. And this is a perfect, this, this is a collage that explains that. Uh, the freeways that uh, are, you know, the freeways are Detroit's most enduring mon monument to racism because they would build freeways through the, I mean, this happened here in, in, in my city, where they would just build a freeway, right, clean through all where all black businesses are, and, and of course, all those businesses went under. I'm trying to stay in the right light, y'all, you so I can see the, 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 the sun is, is going down. But yeah, this is, this is us as a people. You can't, you can't find another group of people where this applies to, y'all. This is the identifier. This is this this is our ID card, y'all. And you can't deny it. This is just what would be a characteristic of us as a people. Oh, this is not this one's not fun either. As I said, none of them are. Deuteronomy twenty eight fifty four. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. <laughs> and toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Oh my. This is us, y'all. This is us. The Bible indicates that there was a time when our men were tender and delicate toward us. They were delicate of the way they treated us. That's what that means. We don't mean that they were feminine. It means that they were tender amongst, they, they had a tenderness and uh love, affection toward their wives and children. And the, it would, we would be in this place that the Lord uh, would send us to uh, where the elderly and the, and the young were not going to be respected and the man would just, just be completely hardened on the inside from just the, the trauma of being under just constant persecution, not being able to just be free, not being able to just handle his business and provide for his family. Do you know how hard that, that's why you women, I'm, I'm hard on y'all, because I'm telling you, why are you thinking that y'all are the ultimate victim? No, our men are, that they were once tender toward us. They are, if, 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 you, if you think that all men are dogs, then you are just bought into the, the propaganda you didn't bought you just didn't, you didn't get, did exactly you bought into exactly what they wanted you to believe because we, there was no ever a need for us to become liberated women we never were supposed to be a part of that movement they piggybacked they 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 piggybacked on our civil rights bill <laughs> and then you know during the time uh, right after King died and they came up with all these subsidies and then the subsidies. Uh, actually incentivized fornication because you couldn't have the man in the house. And then, you know, they had all these decent jobs that, you know, we, that we were using to, to provide, that, that they were, that our men was providing good, stable life, lifestyles for us. And then they just 
took all the, all the business and then put them and took them overseas. And then they put drugs in our communities. And then after a while, those men who were defenders of their communities, they became bastards of the party. That's, a, it's a, that's actually a documentary called Bastards of the Party, where people, men who were trying to defend their communities, they end up having, their, their offspring end up becoming gang members. Because there, there was a hopelessness. Whenever people are ho- hopeless, they'll do desperate things. They'll even kill and, and they'll even kill and eat their own. And that's why that tender man that was a tortoise, he ended up leaving. That's why we had a whole lot of men that would go to the store and men never came back because he was just so bugged out or so so broken because he couldn't provide for his family or he was so depressed. We don't realize that depressed our men can be depressed too, y'all. And I know that a lot of men folk in our community are, suffer from that. But that is why he became, he went from being tender to, to where he ended up being, having an evil eye toward his brother. Black on black crime, y'all. That's what this, that is what this verse is talking about. You can't deny it. This is an identifier. This, you see all of these men on the, on the left side, you see all these men uh, looking happy and, and, and in porches with their families, solid, present, there. Uh, loving on their wives and children, and on the other side you have what single women having babies, uh, you know, out of marriage. And like I say, if you watch the movie Claudine, you know that they couldn't have no man in the house if you're going to continue to get those government su- subsidies. That was by design. That wasn't by accident or by you know. Well, we're just going to. Well, if you're able, it, no, it was nothing else but satanic. Uh, it was. Uh, conspiracy against our people because they know that they can eliminate that man. They make that man hard. They make that man turn on his woman and the woman turn on his man, which they did through uh, the women's movement. Then you can break down a family. You can break up a, a nation because the family is the foundation. It's the, it's, it's, the, it's the fundamental institution for any nation. This is us, y'all. All right, just a few more, y'all. Deuteronomy 2856. And toward her young, young, and toward her young, one that cometh out from between her feet. <laughs> and toward her young children, which she shall bear. For she shall eat them for one of all things, secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gate. This slide is a is a collage just talking about this the, the previous uh curse was about the tenderness of our men and how they changed into and became evil. This one talks about the woman, how that baby that comes out from between her feet, you know, through that child, this is your own flesh and blood, and how they are you turn towards your children to you know to the point to where you want things. And you will abandon your own children or even as much as eat them. Because there was a time during uh, this, uh, when the Romans were uh, waiting us out, trying to destroy us. And while we were uh, thinking we were in a safe place away from them, they were just waiting us out. So Satan is way more patient than we are. <laughs> and to the point to where we actually did back then, we're eating our young. We're going to get back to that place now. I know y'all, no, no, y'all don't believe that, but it is true. We are going to get to a place in de- of de- such desperation and despair that we're going to begin to eat our young, literally, not just figuratively. And this is as for, for things that she wants, all those things that she wants. It may not even be things, things. It may be a man. She will abandon and uh, she will abandon her own children. These are m- women who do things like this woman in New Orleans who a kid. This is recent too. This was just several months ago now, but this is this was less I think less than a year ago stabbed her two children in a custody flight by saying, hey, you know, she was, she, I think it was a threat of her not having the children, so she decided to kill the children. And then, but just above that, a woman who put her baby in the microwave. These are, this is, this is, you know, Christ said that uh, iniquity shall abound and uh, men, the love of, the love of men shall wax cold, you know. This is, we are in those times. So those of you who think we're fixing to get raptured out of here, we are in those times now. Please get over that. 
So here you have, we're going to be raptured. Let me make sure I'm clear, but it's not going to be before all of this stuff happens. Okay, there's going to be a certain point, probably around the time of World War III, when Christ is going to come back. And then the rapture will happen then. But we'll talk about that on another video. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is we have now women who have not even natural, natural affection for their children. We have women now who will literally kill their children to be with a man, kill their children in order to, I mean, in the womb. We have, you know, we have the largest abortion rate. We talked about that earlier. That is, the, that is what our women have become. We have become monsters. And you never thought that there would, you see the day where women would do these kind of things to their children to actually give them up, give them up, you know, sign your, their rights off, giving them away. Choosing drugs over our kids, choosing careers over our kids, over our, their kids, Cho choosing, you know, hot girl summers over their kids, or like look at Kiki, Kiki Palmer, you know, she just had a baby a few months ago, young man, little, I mean, little baby boy, and she had a baby daddy, and she goes to an usher concert with her booty out. I mean, just showing her, comp her complete behind. <laughs> and then no regard for her baby that's back at the house and just because she got money and probably got nannies and all that kind of stuff. Who does that? That's a monster. Uh, I could go on and on and on. But this is characteristics of us. You can't find another group of people on the earth like this. Deuteronomy 2864. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Now this is an identifying verse for more than one reason. Go with me now, because this is very, very important. This identifies more than just who we are. But it also identifies the religion that God says we will be a part of or that we would uh, be serving uh, other gods in. All right? Stay with me. So this it says, the Lord shall scatter thee. You, you, you just, if you just Google how many times the word says scatter in, in the Bible, it's always talking about us being scattered. Because we were under so many captivities. You know, if you look at the statue of Daniel, you know all of the major captivities that line up with world history. We'll get back, we'll get into that probably when we talk more about history in a few minutes. Now, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all the people. So that means that we're scattered among every group of people that you can find. We are we are, you know, the tribe of Reuben is in Australia. They were they are the orig of, aboriginals of Australia. We've been in China. Uh uh, we've been in Germany. Some of the people that 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 Hitler destroyed and put in those uh, concentration camps and furnaces and stuff, many of those were our people. Don't get it twisted. They don't tell you that. Um, we're just all we're scattered all over the world, and we don't all we don't all look like this anymore because of colonization. We ain't all chocolate and, and shades of brown. Some of us look like straight up white folk, but. Whoever your daddy is, that's who you are. I digress. But this this speaks, uh, it, it proves that us being scattered, because we saw the transatlantic slave trade maps, we see that we were scattered to the four corners of the earth. No other people had that kind of slavery, y'all. It was monumental. And the Most High knew that something that monumental had to be mentioned. Had to, Of course, it's going to be a part of the Bible because it's talking about his people. No, the people that are in that land right now, they cannot lay claim to this. They cannot lay claim to this because they are not scattered. Not by weight. Well, we'll get to the last verse. We're getting to the end here. Now it says that where the place where we the places where we would be scattered to, there thou shalt serve other gods. So that means that whatever gods that we are, we adapt or we take on as our own. We, that we're uh, that we're serving, that there are other gods, meaning they're not him. That's an identifier. Hear me. 
and it says it tells you which ones in particular it says the ones that none of your fathers have known so this means that we're talking about the images as well as the doctrine y'all it's not just white jesus as i mentioned in my previous video this is about the doctrine that you nor your fathers have known because there was no imagery of Christ until really until you got into the dark ages where black people ruled Europe. And all of those images were uh, depictions of a black Christ. It wasn't until iconoclasm where the Catholic Church came and had the Jesuits go around to all of the European, once they turned, where, once they conquered all of these uh, lands uh, in Europe and they, they changed the color from white to black on purpose but it says here there in those places you will serve other gods so that means that not only the god meaning that the white christ it also means the doctrine as i explained i think so eloquently in my previous video <laughs> big job and big funny which neither that father none of your fathers are known even wood and stone this is the clincher this is the identifier more specific Wood represents the cross of Christ, I mean Christianity. Ooh, I can't believe I said that. The cross of Christianity. And stone was prophetic for the Kaaba stone of Islam. Oh, don't you see how much God loves us? He's going to tell. He, he, just home, he just narrows it down to where you won't be able to figure. And what are the two religions that black people are in more than any other religion on the planet? We are in Christianity, and we are in Islam. Nation of Islam, somebody? Yes, Christianity and Islam. This is an identifier. Here's your ID, y'all. And, and it, it, this is getting serious because now we're taught, we, we realize that the Most High is making a judgment here, saying that the, those gods would be represented by the wooden cross of Christianity, and the Kaaba stone that's in Mecca right now for Islam. Hmm. Okay, let's make sure I'm really clear on this point because this is a very serious curse here. What I'm saying is what is the most what the most high is saying in this verse, this identifying verse, is that we would of course be scattered all over the earth to all people, amongst all people. But it also says that the religion where the cross is represented, that, that the cross represents and the religion that the Kaaba stone represents, those religions, the gods of those religions, are, he considers other. They are other gods, not him. So I hope you understand the point he's trying to make, that we're getting closer to the end of the chapter and he is trying to make sure that we can identify ourselves more clearly without any ambiguity that whatever religion and God that is represented by the wooden cross is not him. And whatever religion that is represented by the Kaaba stone is not him. All right, fam, we're almost done. And among these nations shalt thy find no ease Neither shall the sole of thy feet have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even, and at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning, for the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. This collage is, is, the best, uh, is the best I could do with the time to try and to um, illustrate that in these nations that the Most High would, would, would scatter us to, that there would just be constant anxiety, constant, uh, uh, just no assurance of life, no, no peace, no peace of mind. Always something that 
uh, you always have to be on guard for. You just can't be yourself. And you don't have any confidence that even when you you're, when you leave your children out, that they're going to come home safely. You don't have any confidence that you're going to live a long life. You know, we have a whole, you know, I, we have a generation of men who have been incarcerated and, and also who have been uh, part of gang violence and stuff who who never thought that they would live past 25. We even have our girls who don't have confidence that they will even be married one day. You know, and that is a, a that's an unfortunate way of living your life. Um, and it is not natural to live a life like that. And again, constantly wondering, um, is, is this going to take me under? Is that going to take me under? Uh, you know, who's going to be taken away from me uh, through the lynchings and through the uh, like gun violence, even the police brutality and instances where you, you can't even trust the people who's supposed to protect and serve you. And interesting in verse 67, it says, In the morning thou shalt say, God, I wish it was evening. And in the evening you say, God, I wish it were morning. I mean, it's, it's, it's like that. You know, I know it's probably like that a lot <laughs> in slavery. And when we were under like Jim Crow and stuff, it's like, I wish that it was the next day. And then when the next day comes, you wish it was the evening. And it's just, that is just not a, a way of people um, who are free and who know who they are and who are able to uh, rule themselves and, and govern themselves. Uh, that's not the way they should be thinking. That's not the way they should be feeling. And that's, so again, that is, that is um, uh, a, a, a distinguishing uh, thing amongst our own people. I mean, how many babies have we buried? Mothers just overcome for the loss of a child, the loss of a spouse, just the loss. I mean, and I'm talking about unnatural deaths, things that you don't, the things that that are uncommon in other people. So, Deuteronomy 26, I mean, 28, 65 to 67, man, it's definitely us. Okay, we're at the last verse. I hope you've been following in your Bible. This is what I call the coup de gras. This is the verse that the Most High said, hey, I'm going to finish off this chapter with this verse. Because this verse is going to be the undeniable proof of who you are. It won't apply to you. can't even begin because whether you are a hater, I mean, whether you are an imposter, whether you are an impersonator, whether you are a wannabe, whatever you are, you there is no way that you can get in on this verse. This curse is ours, and it is the climax, the perfect climax, explaining and identifying. This is our ID card right here. This is the finisher. Let's check it out. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more. What no more? Our land where we come from you shall see it no more again and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you remember earlier I was talking about how and, and you know even in slavery I mean even in Bible times when people would be uh, employed or they would go into serving other people of the nations and sometimes within your nation but then you if, if you could have somebody from your family then come and buy you out and what you call redeem that is that is that is a world culture thing but it certainly was part of us our culture as, as Israelites as well and that is what it means it means that no man shall when it says no man shall buy you that means no man shall redeem you no man shall get you out of this situation no man shall buy you back no one no man will rescue you no man will be able to, to, to get you back to where you came from. Nobody can make amends and, you know, pay any kind of ransom, any kind of nothing. There's nothing that they're going to be able to, no man will be able to buy you back, redeem you. But let's go to the top part where it says, he shall bring, the Lord is going to bring us into Egypt again. Egypt is, let's, let's define Egypt. You look on uh, uh, 
Exodus 20, it explains to you what Egypt is. It is the, the land out of the house of bondage. We talked about this before. Out of the house of bondage. So he said he's going to bring you to Egypt again. Now, if you know Israelite history or world history or anything, y'all know Egypt pretty much went down once we left. Like, just like all other, even America, once we leave, it's going to go down. You know, they're trying to replace us. Okay, y'all can do what you want to, but you know what? America ain't going to be America no more. Once we're gone, because we make everything better. But he says, you, we're going to return, you're going to return to Egypt again, but this time with ships. Now, you know it's got to be talking about a place that requires ships to get there. And this place that the Mar uh, called America, which is referred to as uh, spiritual Sodom and uh, spiritual Egypt and Sodom in Revelation, it requires ships to get here to this Egypt. And look at our money. We know that we have a uh, pyramid on the back. Uh, we have uh, the obelisk uh, called the, the Lincoln Memorial. I mean, uh, the Lincoln Monument. We have, uh, you know, all of these parallels of Egypt <laughs> and America. That's not by chance. The most high knew that this was gonna happen, that we would have a pyramid on the back of our on the back of our money. You know, and and because it is really trying to say the glory of Egypt. And uh but anyway, I'm not gonna talk about that. But this is this is the second Egypt that we have gone that we that we have come into, but by ships. Then that just that just knocks out everybody else. Those people over in that land, they cannot they know that this identifies the people that are in America's and all the America and America and all the Americas are scattered. But the transatlantic slave trade is what this verse is about. And uh, I, I want to uh, make sure that you understand that when it says sold unto your enemies, that we are not sold. It's another verse that, that has that phrase in it. We're not sold to people that love us, y'all. We're not sold to people that's going to uh, to want to see us get uh, uh, unified and come together and get up above the the what you call consumer class. We're never gonna. They they're not gonna want us to become first class citizens or equal or go or or to be competitive with their children or marry their children. Oh no 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 no. That's why we're still slaves. That's why we're begging folk. Uh, to treat us like human beings, to say that our lives matter. While we, after 400 years, we got to tell folks that our lives matter in the country that we built. Mm -mm, y'all, do y'all know this verse is all about us? <laughs> don't even, don't even try. Don't even try. So uh, this is the coup de grace. This is the one that was going to be the finisher. And the Most High is loving us by telling us that we would be taken to our enemies. Where we would be bond men, meaning slave men, and bond women, which means slave women. And there no man shall buy you. I mean, there no man shall buy you, meaning redeem you. Deuteronomy 28, 68. It is the most powerful of all the curses as far as identifying us. This is the identifier. You don't read any other book. They knew that they had to keep us away from this verse. Deuteronomy 28, verses 15 through 68, proves that we are the Israelites. Okay, so that's the end of the curses. I, I trust that you have been uh, convinced that the Bible definitely identifies us as the true Israelites. So please tune in for the upcoming video, the next video, which is the part where we'll give the DNA proof as well as the historical proof. And as promised, we're going to finish with the solution because we don't want to just have, we don't want to just state the problem. There is a biblical solution to uh, the plight of our people. Thank you, fam. True.
Truth. Truth.